Story recapped here. Today I'm gonna explain a comedy, horror, and sci-fi film called The Return of the Living Dead. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. In a modest medical supply warehouse in Louisville, Kentucky called Unita, Bert, the boss, leaves early because it's the 4th of July weekend, but his employee Frank stays behind with Freddy, their new hire, to show him the ropes. Frank shows Freddy the skeletons and teaches him how to pack one. He also presents a shelf of split dogs that they supply to veterinary schools. Furthermore, he brings them inside the walk-in freezer, containing a fresh cadaver that freaks Freddy out. The next day, Freddy's girlfriend Tina plans to meet up with him after work. After mentioning his newfound job to their friends Spider, Scuzz, Trash, Casey, and Chuck, they all plan to pick him up. While at work, Freddy asks Frank what's the weirdest thing he's seen in his job. Frank tells him about the Night of the Living Dead, a movie that's allegedly based on a true story. It's about an unfortunate chemical spill in Pittsburgh that leaked into the morgue that reanimated the corpses. The army was able to clean it all up, but shipped the dead bodies out and kept the incident a secret. Although the remains of the case were supposed to be sent back to the company that caused the incident, Darrow Chemical Company, some were accidentally sent to Unita. When Frank gets a call, Freddy visibly flinches in surprise, spooked by the story. After talking to his wife, Frank offers to show Freddy the corpse. They head down to the basement and check out the bodies, with a living corpse inside. Despite Freddy's awe, he worries that it might leak. But Frank reassures him that the US Army Corps of Engineers made the containers, so there isn't any threat of leakage. However, when Frank tests the theory out, he hits the container, causing it to break. A toxic gas leaks out, directly spraying the tube before knocking them unconscious. As the gas spreads in the warehouse through the vents, the freezer cadaver reanimates back to life. Meanwhile, in an army officer's home, Colonel Glover is having domestic issues with his wife because they're both complaining about how the colonel is stuck manning a radio 24-7 due to the missing corpses that he's waiting to be found. Back with Freddy's friends, they come with their other friend Suicide their designated driver. He's mad that they only hang out with him when they need a ride. They arrive at Unita, but hate waiting for two hours until Freddy finishes his shift. So they break in inside Resurrection Cemetery to fool around for a while. After a moment, Freddy and Frank wake up, realizing that the body inside the container is gone thinking it might have evaporated when it hit the air. While trying to recuperate, Frank reminds Freddy that they shouldn't tell Bert because they'll get in trouble. When they get back upstairs, they hear a dog whimpering, only to realize that the split dog has come back to life. Frank panics and tries to kill it but fails. Furthermore, the cadaver screams and bangs on the freezer door, so Frank immediately locks it. Still in a state of panic, the co-workers try to think of a way to salvage the situation. But due to the risk of staining their reputation alongside Unitas, Frank decides against calling the police. Freddy points out the phone number labeled on the container for emergencies, but Frank tells him that it's for the army, which they wouldn't want to call. So with no other options left, Frank finally just calls Bert. On the other hand, Freddy's friends start to party at the cemetery. Trash unclothes herself to dance on top of a tomb after getting turned on at the thought of dying horribly. When Bert arrives, he's understandably frustrated at Frank, continuously berating him about the mishap. Once the Darrow Chemical Company discovers the accident, they will be sued and lose their business. So they plan to eliminate the evidence instead and hopefully stay quiet about it. They refer to the movie once more and remember that they can kill the zombies by destroying their brains. Bert takes a pickaxe and hands the tool to Frank, instructing him to hit the zombie. He makes Freddy open the lock, while Bert hides among the shelves. When the door opens, the zombie runs straight to Bert despite his distance. The cadaver pins down Bert, so Frank and Freddy come to his assistance and restrain the living corpse to the ground. Bert hits the zombie with the axe, but the plan doesn't work, so he just starts sawing off the body instead. The body struggles to flee despite separating the head, therefore they tie it down. They think of new plans to destroy the corpse but come up short, so instead Bert turns to the help of his good friend, an embalmer who works in the mortuary nearby. But first, they must figure out a way to transport the body. Meanwhile, Casey notices Freddy carrying a big trash bag to the mortuary with Frank and Bert. Bert arrives at the mortuary and greets his friend Ernie. But because he's listening to some music, he can't hear Bert. Bert taps his friend to get his attention, making Ernie pull out a gun in surprise. When he realizes it's just Bert, he puts the firearm away. With a bit of apprehension, Bert asks Ernie for help. 
inviting Frank and Freddy, who carry the bags. The situation is appalling for Ernie, especially after seeing that the bags were moving. Bert lies, saying that it's just rabid weasels, and they need help getting rid of the animals using his crematorium. However, Ernie is a bit reluctant about burning animals alive because it's cruel, so Ernie suggests just shooting them with a gun. But Bert thinks the gun won't work, so to convince Ernie, he tells him the truth. They show him the bag's contents, making the sawed-off arm grab for Ernie, freaking him out. Meanwhile, Tina realizes that it's about time Freddy gets out of work, so she goes to Unita alone to see him. Ernie realizes the predicament and agrees to burn the body if Bert owes him a favor. They successfully cremate the body. However, the rising smoke starts mixing with the rain as it pours. The graveyard party runs to take shelter in the car, complaining that their skin burns, assuming that it's acid rain. Tina enters the warehouse to take cover from the rain, after nobody answers her at the door. Thinking that they've gotten rid of their problem, Bert celebrates and plans to clean up the rest of the mess back at the warehouse. But Frank and Freddy aren't looking so good. They start looking worse for wear, feeling sick from breathing in the gas. To help them out, Bert plans to drive them to the emergency ward, but Frank starts getting hysterical, screaming in pain. So Ernie calls paramedics to their location instead, but doesn't disclose the problem. In the other group, Suicide tries to drive away, but his car won't start. Suddenly, Casey begins to hear something, not knowing that the corpses from the graveyard are coming back to life. When the car roof starts leaking, they decide to follow Tina and Freddy. Alone at Unita, Tina tries to call for Freddy and wanders down to the basement, where she encounters the living corpse from the container. It chases after her, shouting for brains. But when Tina attempts to run back upstairs, a step gives out, making her fall back down. She locks herself inside a closet, but the corpse uses a chain pulley to pry the door open. Thankfully, Suicide calls out to her as they arrive at the warehouse, so the gang immediately comes to her rescue. Caught off guard, the zombie eats Suicide's brain, allowing Tina to escape. Realizing the danger, the rest of the group runs back upstairs. When the paramedics arrive at the mortuary, they take Freddy and Frank's vital signs, but they can't find anything. There's no blood pressure or pulse, indicating that they're not alive despite being conscious. The group, who barricade the basement, runs to the cemetery, hoping to find Freddy in the mortuary, but the ground is flooded. Tina notices that the dead start to dig themselves out from the ground, so they all split up to flee. Unfortunately, Trash ends up alone and gets eaten by the zombies. Spider, Tina, and Scuzz arrive at the mortuary, exclaiming the dire situation outside. On the other hand, Casey and Chuck run back inside Unita. The paramedics return to their vehicle, hoping to get further assistance for Freddy and Frank's peculiar case. However, numerous zombies ambush them. Casey and Chuck enter the warehouse's office to phone for help, but a zombie bursts through the window and rips off the phone. As things start to get even more dangerous, Ernie attempts to use the paramedic's ambulance so they can leave. But when he sees the paramedic getting eaten by a zombie, he runs back inside the mortuary. They try to phone the police, but the lines are unresponsive. At the front door, they see zombies trying to burst through. Therefore, they try their best to barricade themselves using any supply that Ernie has. A zombie, who's eating one of the paramedics, hears a call from the vehicle's radio. So it answers the call and tells them to dispatch more paramedics. In Tina's arms, Freddy starts to feel himself stiffening up, which alerts Ernie. The embalmer scans Freddy's body, who screams in pain even with the tiniest move. Ernie sees the blood pooling up on Freddy's back from where he's lying down, and notices that rigor mortis is setting in. Scuzz freaks out, realizing that Freddy is dead and will soon become a zombie. Outside, they hear another ambulance coming in, but before they can even survey the scene, the zombies already ambush them. Suddenly, one of their barricades starts breaking. They run to deal with it, but Scuzz gets grabbed by one of the zombies. As the zombie starts eating Scuzz's brain, he manages to pull half of the zombie inside, allowing them to tie it down for examination. Ernie starts talking to the zombie, who's still sentient, and answers him with full sentences. Apparently, they can feel the pain of being dead, and the only way to relieve them is by eating brains. At the graveyard, Trash, still unclad, reanimates as a zombie and walks straight towards a homeless man to eat his brain. Stuck with no other options, the group takes Frank and Freddy to lock them inside the chapel in case they start turning, but Tina insists on staying behind with her boyfriend. With the situation getting worse, the police arrive at the cemetery site to investigate the missing paramedics, but end up getting eaten immediately. Once more, the zombies call for more cops in the vehicle's radio. Spider, Ernie, and Bert are at a loss for a plan. Ernie suggests barricading themselves inside a crawl space in the ceiling, but Spider says he'd rather risk 
just getting to the cars and cornering themselves. Ernie finds a jar of nitric acid on his shelf, hoping that it'll work in destroying the zombies. Unfortunately for Tina, Freddy's time has come as he finally becomes a zombie and attempts to eat her brain. The others hear Tina screaming and immediately come to the rescue. But while they're distracted with fighting Freddy, a zombie Frank sneaks out from behind. They fail to take down Freddy, but Ernie throws the nitric acid on Freddy's eyes to subdue him for a while so they can run away. Noticing that Freddy is trying to get out, they barricade the chapel doors. But Ernie accidentally injures his foot in the process as the chair falls on it. Still, Freddy manages to break through the doors while the group decides to make a break for the police car, leaving Tina behind with Ernie, who's struggling to walk, much less run. Tina opens the doors for Bert and Spider, who charges against the zombie horde before locking the door behind them. The two successfully get in the car but can't get Tina and Ernie because the zombies are piling up on the vehicle. They drive away, splitting up the group, much to Tina's frustration. But Ernie is certain that Bert will call help for them. As they manage to drive out of the cemetery gates, another horde runs towards them from the streets. Thus, they end up crashing to Unita, where Casey and Chuck open the door for them. Back at the mortuary, Ernie and Tina lock themselves at the ceiling's crawl space to hide from Freddy. On the other hand, Frank kisses his wedding ring goodbye as he willingly puts himself inside the crematorium. A group of police cars arrive at the cemetery, yet are still overpowered by the zombies. A helicopter flies overhead, announcing that they're barricading the cemetery, clueless of what's going on. Freddy tries to burst through Tina and Ernie's hiding space, using the scent of Tina's brain to pinpoint her location. Because of this, Ernie ponders killing Tina to save himself from the situation. Meanwhile, Bert leads the rest of the group to the basement to use the phone. Bert doesn't hesitate to make Spider open the door, so he can fight the zombie, batting its head away so they can run inside. They lock the door behind them as Bert calls the police captain. He tries to explain the situation, however the captain doesn't understand. Before Bert could reiterate, the zombies get to the police, passing through their barricades, immune to their bullets. Bert laments the situation as he hears the carnage through the phone. As a last ditch effort, Bert calls the military's number on the side of the corpse container, which connects him to a call with Colonel Glover, who's been waiting for the situation. He immediately takes note of Bert's location and size before executing his contingency plan. Colonel Glover uses the radio to call his superior officer and notify him of the situation. On a remote hilltop, Sergeant Jefferson, handling mobile artillery, gets a call to deploy a missile in Louisville, Kentucky, bombing their location. Colonel Glover reports to his general that the situation has been dealt with. He mentions that the rain will take care of the fire caused by the missile, not knowing that it's the same acidic rain that seeps into the ground, reanimating more corpses from the graveyard. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.